Is there a different process for coming up uh, with a character on screen versus animation? And what I'm segueing into is uh, the voice of Chris Griffin is so... I mean, I've heard you loosely talk about it, like how you came up with it, and I think it's fucking fascinating, and I'm <laughs> curious if it's consistent with all voices you're doing with characters of that magnitude. Like that, 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 that particular experience is more consistent with the idea of trying something. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. even if it's dangerous in the room. Like, as an actor, taking a risk. And, you know, for, for every story of Family Guy success, there's, like, right. a dozen, if not 50 of people just being like, I don't know what the fuck he was doing. <laughs> yeah, Jesus yeah, yeah, yeah. Christ. But yeah, you yeah. have to take swings like that. As, yeah. an, as an actor, you have to, you know, not in a desperate attempt to get attention, but in a way to say there's no one else for this role but me. You right. have to take big risks like that. And that, that's just an example of like, in the room, in the moment, I was like, can I just try something? I don't know if this is going to work, but... Yeah, I want to try this. And they were all for it. Yeah. And what'd you say was it was a, a mix of um... that whole week? I had been doing press for Can't Hardly Wait, and Charlie Corsmo, who's in that movie, stayed at my apartment while we were doing all the press, and we just had a great week together, eating like KFC and Fuck Jack in the dude. Box, and there you go. Um, reading because uh, they give you the press breaks and you read all the reviews, and it was like a pack of eighty reviews, and. Within the first review, it was very clear that critics did not like this movie. <laughs> so, More KFC. I gave, I gave Charlie a pink highlighter, yeah. and I took a green one, and we just went through it. Anytime somebody made a very personal criticism of either of us, we just highlighted it and then <laughs> oh, read geez. it to each other. And the, the, the always annoying cartoon weasel, Seth Green, is like, Jesus <laughs> oh, Christ, God. man. Did someone actually Holy write shit. that? Oh, my God. We had to, somebody, somebody likened Charlie to an animated porpoise. Like, we, it was so personal. <laughs> it's so shitty. That we had to like make a yeah. joke out of it. So Charlie and I spent that week together, and I don't know why we got fixated on uh, uh, Ted Levine's character from Silence of the Lambs, Buffalo Bill. Yeah, <laughs> but we both became really fixated on putting him into other situations, <laughs> and so we would go. You go to like the drive-through, and they're like, <laughs> and we were like, ah, that sounds a little bit like Buffalo. But what if it was like, uh, Are you sure you want? French fries. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe you're becoming more of a fat person. <laughs> do Do you want a larger, a larger frosty for fifteen cents? And we just it puts the sweet and sour sauce in the basket. <laughs> <laughs> it takes the spicy chicken sandwich. <laughs> And puts it into the bag. <laughs> oh, and we shit. just, this was killing us. We spent all why. week just putting Ted Levine in a, in other, like you, whatever, like you call the movie there. Uh, you call it for showtime. Uh, he said, she said, is playing at 715. Uh, sparkly romantic comedy starring Kevin Bacon. <laughs> And it's just oh, shit. endlessly funny, uh, so yeah. funny yeah. that when I went into audition for Family Guy, I was like, <laughs> what if it was this? Uh, thanks, Dad. Uh, fight against the machine. And they laughed. They laughed. They, I got that job. It's about last night.